How do you go from possibly the worst player in the NBA to being a valuable piece on a championship level team? The incredible comeback story of Cameron Payne is unlike any other and deserves an in-depth look. So let's go back from the very beginning all the way to last night when he scored 29 points in the conference finals. What up everybody, my name is Stefan and this is Heat Check. let's get into it. After a strong sophomore year at Murray State, averaging 20 points and 6 assists per game, Payne entered the NBA draft and analysts compared him to Damian Lillard, predicting a bright future for him. The fact that he was selected pretty high at number 14 confirmed all of that, so he was headed to the Oklahoma City Thunder. That rookie year in 2016, OKC were making a big push in the playoffs, so watching and kind of rooting for them, I caught a few highlights of pain as well, or I should say lowlights. I distinctly remember watching Cameron struggle under the pressure, even in the limited 4-5 to five minutes per game that he would get while Westbrook was getting a breather on the bench, Payne would always make his presence felt and not by a good thing but by having multiple turnovers or missing open shots. If you take a look at some of the box scores during that postseason, you would see lines like these. 4 minutes, zeros across the board and 2 turnovers. Then 7 minutes, 2 for 7 from the field and 2 turnovers of course. And this one from game 4 against Golden State, 158, 0 for 1 and 1 turnover. Now that's what I call making your presence fail. In less than 2 minutes, basically everything he did on the court was bad for the team. Dude would get subbed in with a 9 point lead and in just a few possessions that would instantly melt down to 2 or 3 and Russell would need to get back in the game. That playoff run of course, he would become more famous for his pre-game dance routines that he did with Westbrook than his actual play. And shout out to my friend Gorian who still laughs to this day about my horror stories watching Cameron Payne on the Thunder. That was legit stressful. When KD left the team in that offseason, OKC tried to retool the roster and Cam was sent to the Chicago Bulls in a trade package for Taj Gibson. What followed was the most blunt statement that I've ever read about a player. Check out this quote from someone within the Bulls organization. We knew the second practice that he couldn't play at an NBA level. The only reason it took two practices was because we thought maybe it was nerves the first one. Any Bulls coach who says differently is lying. Wow, this has to be the harshest thing that I've ever heard about a player by far and back then it only confirmed my initial impressions about this guy. As I just found out yesterday, JJ Redick thought the same thing as well. I mean no disrespect to him because I like, I respect the grind, I respect the player he has become but early in his career, I remember telling people like campaign is not an NBA player. I have no idea why that guy was a lottery pick. I remember telling people that. So it was pretty much a unanimous opinion that Cameron Payne was not an NBA player. And from a Chicago Bulls team that ended the season 13th in the East, Payne signed two 10-day contracts the following season with an even worse team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, who ended the year as 14th in the East or second to last of course with a record of 19-63. and This is important to know because he wasn't picked up by anyone after those 10-day contracts and if you're not worthy of playing for the worst teams in the league, then you must be really bad at basketball, I don't know how else to put it. In November of 2019, Payne basically found himself out of the league and had to sign with a team in China. This is without a doubt the lowest point of his career, just a few years after getting drafted, being universally seen as a horrible player and having to go down to an inferior level of competition just to play, that had to have been demoralizing. After a short stint in the Chinese league, Cameron returns to the states and signs with the G League team Texas Legends. Now this is where things get interesting and where fortune plays a big role in this story. In the G League at the beginning of 2020, Payne slowly started to get his confidence back and played well. In 15 games there, he averaged 23 points, 5 rebounds and 8 assists. So when the NBA returned to the bubble, the Suns, led by Monty Williams, who was an assistant in OKC when Kim was there, needed a player to fill out the roster and based on that relationship as well as his recent performances, they called Payne. I'm in the pool and I wasn't even expecting no call from nobody, I just got a call from another team and they declined and I was like well I guess I'm gonna be watching it. Like, I went to, I got in the pool, he called me and it was just like a dream come true for me, like all over again. I kind of feel like I got drafted again. Like. 
He knew that it's now or never for him, so the second opportunity that he got, he wasn't going to waste it. In the bubble, in 23 minutes per game, he had a strong outing of 11 points, 4 rebounds and 3 assists, while shooting 48.5% from the field and 51.7% from downtown. And the Phoenix Suns were the main attraction, going undefeated in those last 8 games of the season. Although they just missed out on the playoffs, the bubble Suns have a special place among NBA fanatics. As for Cam, that solid run showed that he is trending upwards and certainly on his way back, which earned him a spot on the roster for this season as well. And from there, the rest is history. Even with slightly reduced minutes, Payne still proved to be a valuable role player coming off the bench behind CP3 running the offense. Almost 8.5 points on 48.5% from the field and 44% from 3. Extremely efficient and productive. As you can see in some of these clips, Cameron has one of the sickest hezzy moves in the game, literally using it every time when he decides to go to the basket. Combine that with a nice reverse game at the rim and you can see that he's got his confidence back along with a couple of things in his bag so he's way past his days being known solely as the dancer. What he didn't know is that he would need to step up for his team in the playoffs. Right at the very beginning, in round 1 and game 1, Chris Paul injured his shoulder and it was evident that he wasn't himself. Cameron Payne was ready for it however and delivered big time. Games 2-6 to six, when he saw an increase in playing time, he averaged 14 points and almost 4 assists, helping the Suns move past the Lakers to the second round. Which ultimately leads us to this Western Conference Finals matchup, where once again Phoenix is playing without their lead point guard. And once again, Cam is balling. Game 1, he came out strong and attacked the defense, penetrating to the basket looking for the layup. When he would finally attract multiple defenders, he was great at dishing it out and finding the open man for the easy finish. Cam had 11 points and 9 assists in the opening, which is pretty nice in itself, but he then followed that up in game 2 with 29 and 9 on 50% from the field, as Phoenix took a 2-0 lead in a wild ending game. What can I say, you see these highlights, the constant attack, the drives to the rim, the multiple layups, even the floaters, all of that to keep the team afloat with CP3 out and with Devin Booker having a subpar game. Now all of a sudden, people have completely turned around on him and see him as a great role player, a valuable piece off the bench who's able to contribute for the team in a big way even when the stakes are highest. And I am certainly one of those people. I'm grateful to be here because four months ago I went in the NBA. So this is a great, great, great opportunity and I'm freaking happy. To watch him rise from the lowest of lows, from out of the league, all the way to the player of the game in a conference finals, that's just staggering to me. And it shows what can you accomplish through hard work and perseverance. To me, this comeback story is greater than any most improved player award that you can ever get. And I have a funny feeling that Cam is not done yet. For whatever reason, I expect more of his heroics. That's it for now. Subscribe and talk to you in the next one. Peace out. No worries, I'll be back like Cameron Payne. Peace.